Okay, so in case you may have been living under a slight rock in the cooking show world of YouTube, you may not have heard of, you know, this guy named Joshua Wiseman, who always opens his videos like this. So Joshua Wiseman, in my opinion, is pretty much the GOAT, greatest of all time, for those who do not know what that acronym means, of bake cooking shows on YouTube. I literally love everything that he does, and I've never had a recipe of his go bad. So how could I possibly top Joshua Wiseman, who is a professional chef? Well, that is because as wonderful as Joshua Wiseman is, he does not use freshly milled wheat in his bread recipes. And that, my friends, is how we're gonna be taking Joshua Wiseman's garlic knot bread and making it better by using freshly milled wheat. So, let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to Grains and Grit. My name is Felicia and welcome. And I'm sure you're kind of wondering how in the world I could tackle someone like Joshua Wiseman. Again, I have nothing to against El Papa and I'm gonna be making some references to Joshua Wiseman's videos. So if you're a fan of him like I am, you will be able to catch these references and let me know in the comments below if you do. So the papa is amazing at what he does but the only thing i have against him really is that he never uses freshly milled wheat so joshua wiseman if you ever see this video i challenge you to actually be using freshly milled grains in your videos just saying today i'm going to be converting yet another recipe from a big youtuber um, if you've seen my chocolate chip cookie video that was a conversion from natasha's kitchen rec recipe which she's also amazing and today we're going to be doing garlic knots with 100 percent freshly milled wheat and this is a converted from joshua wiseman's um, garlic knot recipe which are really really good but i really do believe that they are better not only is freshly milled wheat healthier you maintain all the amazing benefits with the wheat whenever you mill it yourself but i do believe that freshly milled wheat it's true it just it imparts a flavor that store-bought flour just just doesn't give you so i'm going to be walking you through the recipe printable recipe will be in the description box below so be sure to check that out and if any of the recipes that you're looking for i do have them on my website you can just go to grainsandgrit.com slash recipes and you'll be able to find a lot of printable recipes there. The main thing that I have to tell you is the wheat that was used, and it may actually surprise you. This is a combination of 50% hard white wheat and 50% soft white wheat. And I have found that the combination of those two wheats at a 50-50 ratio gives this a very, makes this bread very soft. Um, it still rises well like it needs to be. Remember, soft white wheat is generally not used for any of your yeast breads, but we're not going for a super tall loaf, yeast loaf. So that's why the soft white wheat, we can use more of it here um, so it softens that bread. So these are really delicious, soft, buttery, garlicky, parmesan-y, oh, wonderfulness here. Um, my family, when I put these on the table, they pretty much inhaled them. Um, I even had to snatch some away so I could like get a picture and stuff because they were they were consuming them way too fast. <laughs> so this is family approved. All of my kids loved it, even down to my littlest one. Um, so this will be an easy recipe, especially for those of you who may be having trouble converting your family to freshly milled wheat. Definitely give this recipe a try. So again, 50% hard white wheat, 50% soft white wheat for this. And, um, Due to popular requests, I will now be including in my recipes how much of the actual wheat berries you need to mill because usually I just say how many cups of flour and many of y'all have actually requested, well, how much grain is that do I need to mill so you do not mill too much. So I will be including that in the recipe as well. If you do not have soft white wheat, um, spelt and kamu also generally work a lot like soft white wheat. You could also just try using spelt or kamu or maybe 100% soft wheat, but I found that the hard white wheat tends to kind of give it a little bit more texture um, with this recipe. It's up to you. That's the beauty of these, of using freshly milled grains is you have so many options to choose from, but my favorite was a hard white and soft white. Hey, before we begin, super exciting announcement. In case you've missed it, I did mention it. Um, for those of you who are signed up for my newsletter, 
but Grains and Grit now has a membership. I'm super excited about it. So this membership, not only what do you receive an extra recipe every single week straight to your inbox, but you also receive access to a members exclusive podcast. And in this podcast, I will be giving you even more tips and tricks um, as far as consuming freshly whole grains, biblical living, healthy living, all the things with that, um, as well as behind the scenes, um, some thoughts that I have regarding bread, you know, all, all of this wonderful stuff that you get on top of the weekly YouTube videos. So link for that will be in the description box below. You can check out all the details there and I look forward to seeing you in the membership. So let's get started on this recipe. Okay, so here we are at Miss Bessie Bosch, and we are going to be adding one and a quarter cup of warm water and one tablespoon of instant yeast. And we're gonna stir all that together until it's incorporated. Then we're gonna get one of these little spatulas here, and we're going to then combine one egg yolk to that. Give it a good stir, push it down if need be, and then we're gonna get our flour. So we're gonna grab all of our flour and we need 525 grams or just under five cups of flour. Then we're gonna grab our salt and we need two teaspoons of fine salt and three tablespoons of sugar. And then we're gonna whisk all that together back to our mixer and we're gonna go ahead and turn this on and slowly add the flour mixture about one cup at a time. Sometimes I need all of this flour and sometimes I need just a little bit less, but we're gonna add it until it just starts pulling away from the side and then we're gonna set our timer for five minutes and let this knead for five minutes. All right, now the five minutes are up and we are now gonna grab two and a half to three tablespoons or 35 grams of softened unsalted butter. And we're gonna add that to this. Now, don't freak out, it's gonna look a bit wonky. You may even so see some of the bran come out, but just keep mixing until all of the butter is incorporated. And sometimes about halfway through, I stop this to kind of brush down the sides. And at this point, I do like to add sometimes about one tablespoon of flour just to help it out a little bit. And we're gonna keep this going for about another minute or two until you once again start seeing it fully scraping the sides of the bowl. And that means that it's all incorporated Incorporated. And as you can see, we get a nice soft dough, but it is going to be a little bit sticky and that's fine. That's what you want. As you can see, it does stick a little bit to my hands and that's fine. Don't keep adding flour. Otherwise it's going to be too tough of a dough. And we're going to set this aside and we're gonna take this out onto an unfloured surface. Don't flour the surface. And we're just gonna shape this into a little ball before we place it in our bowl for our first rise. So we're gonna still use our hands. You can see it's not really sticking to the counter. It is sticking a little bit to my hands. Again, that's okay, that's what we want. And we're gonna carefully shape this into just a little ball. No need to be a little perfectionist here about it. It's okay, this is just for our first rise. So just roughly get it into the shape of a ball. And now we're just gonna place this in a grease bowl. Make sure it's large enough to make sure that the dough can rise about double in size. So watch the size of your bowl. And then we're just gonna cover that in saran wrap and let this rise for about one hour. And um, I like to put this in a warm spot, actually on top of my oven where it's kind of warm. And while this is rising, uh, let me tell you about these spatulas. Okay. So I just wanted to talk to you guys about a product that I was actually sent. Um, and they gave me a discount code for you guys as well as I think like $2 off. Um, so this is a cool little set of some little spatulas and the pastry brushes that I received. Um, and I've been reviewing them, using them for about a couple months now, or a little over a month actually. And um, I just wanted to talk to you about them because you're gonna see them in this video and also for future videos. So if you're looking for a little spatula and especially these pastry brushes um, sets, um, these are not too bad. Now, they are like only 10 bucks, plus you'll get some more off with my discount code below. So they are like, crazy super cheap um, and I can definitely tell with the silicone here that it is 
cheaper than other silicone brushes that I do own, but in saying that, it still gets the job done. Now, one thing to consider about these, or one great thing about these is, I mean, you get four of them and they're very, very colorful. You can see here's the four little pastry brushes that you get. And then it comes with the two little spatulas. Now, do you know that these are small spatulas here? These are not super big. So let me actually grab some of my other silicone spatulas to compare. Okay, so here is a regular size spatula type thing that I have to compare. This is a Pampered Chef one. So you can see they are smaller um, and definitely just all around smaller but so these aren't really great if you have like a really deep dish and you really need to get down and do it but these are great i like using them for my little projects like you'll see later um, where i just need to do like a little bit of butter or these working with smaller bowls these are also fantastic for whenever you to stir up your sourdough starter um, because i do i've always liked using small ones like this um because i'm usually having smaller jars and so these are actually great and another great thing about these is because they're so bright and colorful kids really like to use them so especially if you're looking at your kids cooking more this would be a wonderful set that they would enjoy and it is definitely great for little hands as well. So you'll be seeing me do um, use these throughout the video. Again, they did not sponsor this. This is, was Redia, I believe is how they say it, um, a pastry brush set that they sent me um, for review. And again, I do like them. Again, the silicone brushes, they definitely are a bit cheaper, but everything is dishwashable. Um, and I've run them through my dishwasher several times and they're fine, nothing has broken off. Um, and they're, they are great and they do get the job done. So if you're looking for a new little set or especially a great little kid set, um, or little spatulas like these, um, be sure to check the description box below. And again, you get a um, coupon code with that as well. All right, so here we are one hour later and it has risen nicely. We're gonna lightly, lightly flour our surface here. This is just the flour that already milled. And then we're gonna carefully dump out our bread onto this surface and then start shaping it out into a rectangle. Um, you can just start doing this with your hands. Eventually, you, um, I will be pulling out my little pastry roller. These things are wonderful. And start rolling it out to about 14 inches wide wide and about seven or eight inches tall. The thickness of the dough should probably be about um, a quarter of an inch or so, um, but the bottom line is you definitely want to get it out to 14 inches wide because then we're going to be taking a little pizza roller here, whatever you have, and cut these up into one inch strips. And if it's 14 inches wide, that means you're going to come out with 14 one inch strips. And then we're just gonna take our sheet pan here with parchment paper that is slightly oiled, and we're gonna take our strips, and I like to kind of fold them in half, and start rolling them up into about seven to eight inches long, and try to make sure they're as even as possible. And then we're just going to take it, you can see that's about seven to eight inches, take it and tie it in a little knot, and then you're just gonna tuck the ends over. This does take some practice to get them all nice and even. I definitely have not perfected it yet, but they're still gonna be fine. They're still gonna taste fine. So again, you're just gonna take a strip, kind of fold them in half or so, and then roll them out evenly as possible to about seven to eight inches or so, and then tie them in a knot, and the little ends you just tuck over and set it on your baking sheet. And here we go with the very last one. This was a little less dough, so it's a little mini, mini garlic knot, and it's gonna be cute. Um, but we're gonna work with it. And here we are, how they look on our pan. As you can see, they are not all uniform, but that's okay. Mama does not quite go for perfectionism over here. Um, and I am not a professional chef like 
papa is, but mama's going to get food on the table for these kids. So now we're going to set them aside and let them rise for about 30 minutes. And while they rise, we are going to take half a cup or basically one stick of salted butter and melt that up. And to that, we're going to be adding one cup of finely grated Parmigiano Reggiano. And don't get the cheap stuff on this. Use actual real Parmesan and grate it yourself. And then we're going to be adding a quarter cup of fresh Italian parsley or about two tablespoons of dried parsley, um, some thyme, and four cloves of garlic finely chopped. And we're going to mix this all together with the melted butter. Um, and then I find that I need to add another two tablespoons. But here we are 30 minutes after rising. They have puffed up pretty well. You do need to be preheating your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we're going to use our little pastry brush and brush on some of this wonderful garlic battery parmesan oh goodness here and you're gonna brush it on you're not gonna use all of it we're gonna save it for later and you will see and once it's all brushed on we're then going to place this in a 400 degree preheated oven for about 15 minutes and voila here they are golden brown and they smell amazing and now we're gonna grab a very large bowl and while they're hot, yes, we're grabbing them, but I'm over here being a baby because they're super hot. So I'm gonna grab some tongs, place the garlic knots in a bowl. And once they are all placed in the bowl, you're then gonna take all of your melted buttery Parmigiano Reggiano goodness and douse it. And then we're gonna coat these babies in that buttery garlicky wonderfulness goodness sauce. And here we are. And my family was licking their chops, and this is what I served it with. I actually used Joshua Wiseman Fettuccine Al Burro recipe, but I had to adapt it because I didn't have any fettuccine, and that was okay. So this is actually just penne pasta that I made with the garlic knots and some buttered peas, and my family loved it. All of these garlic knots were completely gone by the end of the meal. And speaking of butter, do you know what else starts with B? B-roll. All right, so there you have it, y'all. It's actually a pretty simple recipe. Um, so this will be great. I think um, I'm pretty confident that even beginners can probably do it. Is it is a few extra steps. Um, you can knead this by hand, um, and you can do it with even a stand mixer because, as you as you saw, this wasn't a huge amount of dough. Um, also, feel free to double or even triple this recipe if you need to. So I hope that this was very helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you were a fan of El Papa, Joshua Wiseman. Um, and let me know if you've tried this recipe as well. Also, if you would like me to convert other recipes that you have found, especially here on YouTube, maybe some famous recipes that you know of, um, let me know in the description box below and I will see what I can do for you. I'm here for your recipe requests. It's the number one thing that y'all have requested. And I hope this is helpful. So as always, I hope you have a wonderful week. Enjoy this recipe and I'll see you next week. Bye.